Hey, Soraya, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, I am so sorry about that. I have been running around like crazy trying to catch up from that. Um, so, my, my sincerest apologies again. How, how has your day been? Uh, it's been pretty good. Yeah? Just out watering my garden and, you know. What are you growing? Kids and, yeah. yeah, all that fun stuff. What are, you, what are you growing in your garden? Oh, oh a whole lot of everything. <laughs> yeah? Zucchini, you know, eight types of squash. Eight? Um, you said eight types of squash? Uh, yeah, eight types of squash. Are there eight yeah. types of squash? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there, there's eight types of squash. <laughs> there's, there's actually more than eight. Really? Only doing eight. <laughs> okay, how many? Do you know the total number for that? No, I don't. Okay. <laughs> they're coming up with new ones all the time. Which one's your favorite then? <laughs> You said eight ball zucchini? Yeah. I'm going to Google that right now just to see what you're talking about. <laughs> just to see if I'm telling the truth? If it's a real thing or not, because that sounds made up. I hate to tell you, sir. <laughs> oh, no. When I saw it, I thought it was made up, too. I'm like, what, what the, the heck? And so I just had to grow it just to uh, look at just it. To, just to see and see how it tasted. And this everything. is like, it yeah. looks like a little pumpkin almost. Yeah. Almost, that's what my daughter says it looks like. She's like, Mom, it's just a little pumpkin. I'm like, no, it's not, it's zucchini. Okay, does it taste like zucchini? Uh, what's that? Does it taste pretty much the same as normal zucchini? Yeah. Gosh. Yeah, it tastes, tastes exactly like zucchini. Okay, well, some of these pictures are like stuffed 8-ball zucchini, and it's making my yeah. stomach hungry. So <laughs> I'm going to close this tab out because these look amazing. <laughs> well, if you like, you know, if you like zucchini, uh -huh. it's, you know, it's good. Yeah. And so, <laughs> and I, I, they actually grow really, really well, and they produce really well. I've got probably about eight or nine of them downstairs that okay. I didn't have to give away. So right, you live in, have... you live in Las Vegas, though. Yeah. How the heck are you gardening? You can grow things in Vegas. No, you can't. It's too hot. <laughs> no, it's not. It was 106. I had to go out and water it in the middle of the day. Okay. Because the plants were wilty, uh -huh. but, um... If you keep it watered, you can grow pretty yeah. much anything. I've got, um, I've got tomatoes, I have kale, I have spinach, I have cabbage, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, celery, onions, four different types of melons, uh, peas, green beans. I did start out with seven or eight different types of cucumber, sunflowers, strawberries, eggplants, tomatoes. So so what you're telling me is is you like to garden then. <laughs> oh, yeah, I love to garden. <laughs> That's awesome. My my mom loves to garden too and she lives in Las Vegas herself to be honest. And she's just she just doesn't ever want to try it because of how much you have to like I don't know, I would imagine that you'd have to care for it quite a bit more than a normal place, yeah. but No, I think I, I was out there for an hour just watering it, but I have a large garden. And so my, and, you know, I don't have a drip system hooked up yet, and so I just have to go out and water it by hand. So I think, you know, if I were to get a drip system, I'd only spend probably about maybe a half an hour on it a day, if really? that. And so it doesn't take a lot of time at all. You need to get a drip system then. <laughs> <laughs> That's the next thing on the list. Is it? Drip system, so. How, yeah. long have you been, how long have you been gardening for? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> my my parents brought us up with a garden every single year, and then when uh, my husband and I got married, that was one of the things I said we had to have was a garden. Like and no questions asked, we need a garden. Yeah. <laughs> so, but that that was the one thing, and you know, I have struggled for the last uh, twenty one years because gardening in Vegas is different than gardening out in Walker Valley. Mm hmm. And so, it, you know, finding finding what works here 
was the biggest thing. And we tried something new last year. We moved our garden from where we had it to a whole new different area. And it did really well. And then this year we dug out all the dirt that we had and put different dirt in. And it's doing even better this year. So. Do you like? Do you ever sell any of your produce? No, I just give it away. Oh, hey, that's even better. But your neighbors love you. So, so if you were here, I would give you some. <laughs> well, next time, next time I go visit my aunt Jenny, I need to come and uh, come and take some off your hands or something. Is what it sounds like. <laughs> you should. Yes, you definitely should. Well, with twelve with twelve kids, I'm sure you've got plenty of mouths to feed with your garden. So. I, I would if they eat it. They but, don't. They don't um, like vegetables. Not all of them, no. Some Aww. of them do. Probably half of them do. Okay, and that's right. You had like, it was 1 to 20, right? That was the age groups? Yeah. And so I'd imagine the the younger ones are more the vegetable, like, people that don't like them? No, actually, my babies, that's all they will eat is fruits and veggies. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. But, yeah, my, my middle ones, they're the ones that don't really like the vegetables because at the, when they were little was when I was having quite a bit of health problems, yeah. and um, I just went for convenience foods, and so they had a lot of peanut butter and jelly, mac and cheese, and corn dogs. Mm. <laughs> so. Sounds like my childhood right there. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, they're, they're not too thrilled that we're, you know, making them eat more vegetables. <laughs> they're gonna, they're gonna, yeah, they're gonna grow up healthier because of it. Because you're a good mom and like to make sure they get those vegetables. <laughs> That's awesome. That, well, I'm, I'm impressed. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet, but I'm, in, I'm impressed because like that's a lot of vegetables to grow, especially in such a hot climate. So. That's... It is, and, and the thing is, is the plants they're big and beautiful, and right now uh, the squash bugs haven't found them yet. So. Ooh, I'm there just you go. Yeah, you should just, I don't know, paint them, paint them brown so they can't ever see them. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it'd have to be something nasty to smell, too. Yes, that, that is another thing. That was always what ruined our squash. We had a couple plants in our garden of squash and zucchini and stuff, and it's just, they always got to them, no matter what happened. Like, we couldn't get them to stay away, but then again, we yeah. didn't spend as much time as we probably should have taken care of our garden, but... Um, <laughs> Yeah. It's still annoying. I don't like them. They're, they're one of the bugs that I really dislike a lot. Yeah. So, what do you use to prevent them? Um, you can put diatomaceous earth on the plants and it will kill them. Okay. Yeah. And diatomaceous earth, it's, um, it, it's ground up um, bone. Ground up bone, fish bones and stuff, fossil bones and stuff. And you just put that on the plant, and then it gets on the bugs, and it cuts them to pieces. It shreds their exoskeleton. Really? And, yeah, and then they basically dehydrate. They um, die from dehydration, which is not a good way to go, but <laughs> you're dehydrating my plants, so I'm going to dehydrate you. It sounds, like, it sounds like Lysol for bugs, like... Cause, cause Lysol it does the exact same thing to bacteria as it cuts them in half. It lysates, lysels them, and so it sounds like you're just splitting them open. <laughs> yeah. It's just a um, more natural way to do it. No chemicals involved. It's just, um, it's just all natural. So. And can you eat it? Like if you accidentally ingest some, like is it gonna hurt yeah. you? Yeah, you'll be fine. Just don't breathe it in, cause it'll shred your lungs. Girl, yeah, we, we, you wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> well, dang. Yeah. Well, that's awesome, Sarah. Hey, and again, thank you for thank you for being willing to see my presentation. By the way, I uh, I know there's a lot of things you probably got going on with your day, and so this really does help me out a ton that you're willing to meet with me. Um, and then did you did you end up getting my email? By the way. Yeah, I did. I sent you another. I, I sent you an email, but it was like ten minutes before one. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I I'm seeing that right here. Actually, sorry, I'm, I still feel bad. <laughs> um, so. Then, did you get a chance to pull up the website we'll be using? Yeah. Okay, and then did you um, just let it load, or is it just sitting there on the front slide right there? It's there right now, so we're on the first slide. Okay, and cool. Brian already looked through it. And what's that? Brian already looked through it. <laughs> he, he already scanned through everything, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, I would expect nothing less from an IT guy. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's funny. Um, he is an IT, right? That's what you said to me, Soraya? Yeah, he's an IT. 
Yep. Okay, cool. And how is it getting off early, Brian? Good. Yeah? You look forward to Fridays? Yeah. <laughs> What's that? Doesn't really matter too much. We don't do much right now. Yeah. Do they make you work weekends? No. We're, we have the, we're on a contract closeout where, like, I, I basically do nothing all day long every day. Well, that's no fun. Hey, I'm getting paid big bucks to do that. Hey, well then I, I guess you can't complain then, can you? <laughs> <laughs> Dang, well, that's that's awesome, man. And do you enjoy IT work though? Yeah. Okay, cool. I, uh, I don't have the patience for that kind of stuff, but we need people like you willing to, willing to fix and and help with that. And so I, I'm sure the hardest part of your job is is dealing with people like me who can't can't take the time to fix their own stuff, huh? Oh, yeah? Yeah, so... Well, that's got to be nice. We weren't actually in charge of helping people. No, it... Me, he gets frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Are you the one that's like, you're like, honey, you got to shut it off and back on again. It's simple as that, like... No, I, I've gotten to the point where that part of it. <laughs> I do that first before I call him. <laughs> okay. That's got to save him some headache. <laughs> oh, dang. Well, it works him the headache, but, no, computers, they quit working when I'm around, but when he walks in the door, I'm sure it has everything to do with his presence. Like that's. It does. It's like they just—that's why you went into it. It's just you're calling. <laughs> oh, big. So awesome. So then, if you have it pulled up, um, you should see four individual images, correct? And should they cut go at the top? Yep. And so typically, before I jump into the presentation, I do like to just explain a little bit about myself. Um, my name's Nick, of course. I'm, I'm living here in St. George. You guys know my Aunt Jan and Uncle Nathan, it sounds like, from your old ward, correct? And then I got your number from Marilyn and Kent. And how long have you known them before? Like, how long have you guys been friends with Marilyn and Kent? Uh, nine years. <laughs> okay, so a minute then. Um, they were... They were super cool people. I love talking to them. Um, I really enjoyed this job. It's been super fun for me. I'm a student right now at Dixie State University. I don't know if I mentioned that. Um, but I'm working with this company um, because they offer me a lot of resume experience and like people skills, communication skills to add to my resume. Um, and I also have a shot at winning a scholarship to help me pay for school, which is great because um, school, if someone's offering to pay for it for me, then I'm all over that because it's expensive. <laughs> and so um, what's that? Yeah. Did you guys both went to school? Um, my Brian just finished uh, his four year degree what two years ago. Okay. And um, our daughters are both in school right now. What well, school do they go to? So yeah. Where are they at? Uh, well, since our oldest was going to BYU Idaho, but she's kind of taking a break right now, and then our second is doing the Pathways program. Mm hmm. She's gonna go transition into BYU Idaho. Cool. So. The Pathway program that was a that was a route that I was looking at for a while. It's really really great, honestly. Like yeah. the fact that you can the rates that you can get per credit that's ridiculous. Yeah, like sixty nine dollars a credit or whatever it is. Yeah, I'm still tempted to like take that up and, and try that route because yeah, it's incredible. With the online program. What's that? It only applies. If Oh yeah, yeah. I I don't know if I want to live in Rexburg though. That's my only hesitancy. <laughs> yeah, it's too cold. That was one, that was our oldest problem. That it was too cold, and she did not like that. So. <laughs> yeah, I uh, yeah. I don't know. I I couldn't deal with that. I served my mission in Rochester, New York, Buffalo area. And so I'm familiar with cold, but I don't ever, ever want to live somewhere where I have to shovel snow ever again. And so <laughs> I just cannot stand like getting to my car in the morning and needing to go somewhere and then having to spend half an hour shoveling white bullcrap off my porch. And so um, it's just not my thing. And so I... Uh... His brother used to live up in Buffalo. Oh, really? Yeah. What, a couple years ago? Which year? Do you know what one? Okay. Yeah, I served my mission in Buffalo area t 2015 to 2017, so... That sounds about right. 
Like, yeah, no, it was, was he here? Was he there for the big snow at the end of 2014? Yes, he was. <laughs> that was miserable. I just barely missed that one, but I got there in February of 2015, and the average temperature all month long in Buffalo was negative 10. <laughs> like, that was... Yes, and I went straight from Vegas to that, so, like, that was hard, <laughs> but I loved it. I loved every minute of it. It was great, and then I came back to Vegas and decided I wanted to live somewhere a little bit smaller, so that's why I picked Dixie, came back home to St. George, because um, my mom lives in Vegas, like I was saying, and so school's been great. This job's been super great for school, like I was mentioning, but I do have some really big goals with this company, and do you mind if I share those with you really quick? Go So, if you click on the next slide, there is a page that says, thank you for helping me reach my goals. Do you see that there? Okay, perfect. Yeah, what? there it is. There we go. And Soraya, Brian, this is the most important part about my presentation. And it's those two letters or those two words right there, the very first part, the thank you. Because seriously, I couldn't do this job without nice people like you being willing to hear me out. And it means it really means a lot to me that you're willing to, to sit down with me and to hear my presentation. Because I am working really, really hard towards a lot of things, and, and it just means the world to me. And so some of these things that I'm working towards right now are, most importantly, that All-American Scholarship. And so only 100 students a year are selected to receive scholarships out of the students. We work with thousands of students in our company, and only 100 a year are selected for scholarships, and then only 50, in the, 50 of those are in the summertime. And so I'm currently working towards that All-American Scholarship, and it is based off results and whatnot. And based off last year's numbers, I have to sell about $40,000 worth of Cutco by the end of August to stay on track for that. And so obviously that's a huge goal. Um, I have never sold that much of anything in my entire life. And so um, I'm kind of nervous that I may be overstretching myself and that like I may be reaching too far, but I am 100% committed to this goal and giving it my absolute best and working harder than I've ever worked before to make sure that I can I can reach that. And I've actually been doing super, super well so far. Um, currently up to today, I have sold just about $21,000 worth of Cutco um, in the last month and a half. And so um, I've been working my butt off. I've been running around like a head with my chicken gut off trying to get this goal accomplished. Um, and I, like I said, I've been doing super well. Um, I'm about halfway there to my goal, which is awesome. As far as like my presentation goes though, my biggest expectation for this, and it's gonna sound a little funny, it's just to make sure you guys like me. <laughs> and so um, the reason is, is I can only show Cutco to people I've been personally recommended to. And so just like Marilyn and Kent recommended me to you, that's really my favorite part about the job is because all of my referrals are from personal, all of my appointments are from personal referrals. And so I get to meet a lot of really, really nice people like you guys, and it really makes my job a whole lot of fun. And so my, like, like I said, my biggest goal isn't to sell you anything, it's just to make sure you guys like me. And so that way I, you guys, I just want to make sure you guys feel comfortable enough in our presentation to refer me to some of your friends and family and whatnot. And that's really the most important part. I just wanted to give that to you as a heads up so that way it wasn't a surprise at the end when I asked about it. But we can talk more about that at the end because we still got to make sure you like me first, okay? <laughs> um, so, um, as far as... Hey, well, there we go. We can just cut it short right here. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so, again, though, please don't feel like you have to buy anything today just to help me out with my goal. Um, honestly, Cutco's way too expensive to buy to be nice. And so, um, however, most people that I see do end up loving the product and finding something that they'd like to get. I know I helped Marilyn and Kent get a set of Cutco, which was great, and, and they're going to love it. Um, and same with my Aunt Jen and, and pretty much most people that I see end up finding something that they like. And if that happens to be you, I'd love to help you out with it. But again, there's no pressure to buy anything, okay? Um, I have to tell you that you have a set of knives. So. What, what kind of set of knives do you have? Uh, we have the... <laughs> <laughs> is it really? Because I, I can show presentations to people with Cutco all the time. The homemaker set. The homemaker set. The yes. housewife set. <laughs> that home house somewhere. Yes, exactly. There you go. How long have you guys had it? Uh, uh, four or five years. Because Angela did it right before she left on her mission. She's already back. She's back in. <laughs> 
Yeah, four or five years. And do you guys still have all your fingers? <laughs> we have cut them a number of times, so we still have them all. Good, I'm glad. They're sharp, aren't they? <laughs> they are, and uh, Brian keeps them honed, and so um, they're really sharp. Yeah, so so he keeps the he sharpens the straight edge ones. Yeah. Okay, you don't try to sharpen the serrated edge ones, do you? No. Okay, good. Um, sometimes I've heard of people horror stories of people trying to do that, and so. No, you... don't do that. <laughs> I actually I am service call certified. Sadly, you guys are in Vegas, but I can actually go to people's houses and sharpen their serrated edge knives with my special sharpener. Um, which is pretty cool. So if I ever happen to be near my Aunt Jen's house, I should give you guys a call and come over and sharpen your stuff. Um, do. Come down in like a month or so. <laughs> in a month? Why a month or so? <laughs> oh, just because. Okay. <laughs> I yeah. will still have produce in my garden. There you go. You'll still have stuff you need to cut. Um, <laughs> and you guys, you guys remember the guarantee and stuff that you can always send them back to the factory to sharpen for free and whatnot? I forgot about that one. Yeah, so... <laughs> Okay, so this will all be just a big review for you guys because you guys already own Cutco. And did you guys customize your set or is it pretty much all the, the basic homemaker set? It's just the basic homemaker set. I We did get the kitchen shears as well. Oh yeah, that's, are those the best? I, I do like them. I use them out in my garden. I use them for cutting lots of different things. Probably oh yeah. But I do anyway. No, you are absolutely supposed to use them on everything. My boss's dad keeps a pair in his shop and uses them like tin snips. So, like, they're, they're amazing. Most people, like, a lot of people have several pairs just because they love them so much. And you can use them for everything. And so, um, as far as the presentation goes, what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to run you through a reminder about, like, the company and then our, like, our why people invest in Cutco, a little bit about the product line, and then we'll review prices and specials at the end, Okay. Um, and as far as like the presentation goes, though, I do have a couple of rules. Number one, I want you guys to feel comfortable enough to interject at any point. I tend to talk. So if you have questions for me, be like, Nick, you need to slow down and like, and I have a question for you. Okay. Just cut me off mid sentence. Okay. <laughs> and so, um, and, what's that? Okay. Okay. And then the second thing is you don't have to laugh, but you have to at least roll your eyes at my jokes. Okay. <laughs> and so some of them can get pretty bad. Um, as far as like dry. And so Cutco is... I, I married a person with a dry sense of humor, so... There you go. You're all good. <laughs> okay, perfect. So if you click to the next slide, there's a page that says, what is Cutco? Do you see that there? Yep. So Cutco is an American-made kitchen company that's been around since 1949. And so since all of their knives have been made in their factory in Olean, New York, since they've opened... Um, they also specialize, obviously, in kitchen knives mostly, but they're more than just kitchen knives. We also sell pots and pans, flatware, gadgets, accessories, out, uh, like outdoor products. We have hunting knives and sporting knives. Heck, we see we even sell garden tools, Soraya. And so um, I don't know if you've seen those before, but he was showing them to me, but I didn't have time to look. Yeah, they're pretty sweet, and I'll show you those in a little bit. And so. Cutco has been around since that long. They sell over $200 million worth of Cutco annually, so like at least 10 sets. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Um, a lot more than 10. They also have over 19, it's, that number is outdated. It's over 19 million customers now. And so they're also involved in lots of local and national charities like Make-A-Wish Foundation, Front Row Foundation, Children's Miracle Network, and Feeding America. And we even have a, a thing right now going on this month um, for Alzheimer's awareness where we have a couple products being sold in purple. Like our, our super shears, we have that in purple as well as a spatula spreader in purple and a purple cutting board as well. And 10% of the proceeds go towards Alzheimer's, like the Alzheimer's Foundation. And so that's pretty sweet as well. And then again, it's going on this month. I don't know if you like purple that much, but it's pretty cool. Um, and then to start off, I just want to show you the video here on the next slide of our super shears. They're pretty great. You know how great they are. They're fantastic sets for, uh, fantastic scissors for literally everything, paper, plastic, cardboard, fabric, um, food, of course, um, gardens, if that's, you know, your cup of tea. <laughs> um, and so I love the super shears. It sounds like you guys do as well. Did that video play for you? Okay, and you know how good they are, so we can go ahead and skip that. And then you can see the veggie peeler here. Do you have a veggie peeler? I have multiple veggie peelers, but not a Cutco one. Not a Cutco one. Okay, so the Cutco veggie peeler is amazing. It peels in both directions, so if you're left or right-handed, it doesn't matter. I love it because I can peel like a, a cucumber 
in literally just three seconds. I just go up and down really, really fast and it peels on the way down and it peels on the way up <laughs> and I can get through it just rotating it quickly. Um, also, all of our gadgets and accessories are guaranteed forever in dishwasher safe. And so even our peeler, my mom probably tried to steal my peeler like five or six times when I gave her the presentation. She kept sliding it off the table and putting it in her pocket. And so like, mom, I need that. So I had to buy her one for Christmas, but um, she loves it. And so a lot of customers end up getting a couple of these things for free. And I'll, I'll show you how to do that a little bit later. But first, I want to talk about how we got the idea for Kako. OK, so you see a drawer full of knives there. <laughs> yeah. Did you uh, did you have a drawer like that, pretty similar to that, before you bought Cutco? Uh, no. No? Okay, good. Cause... Uh, I've always had a knife block because I don't like knives in the drawer loose. Right? Like, I don't know why people do that. It's so unsafe and bad for your knives, too. <laughs> so a lot of people have a set like that. We call this the world's most expensive set of knives in the drawer right there. And it's because the average knife is only designed to last about two years. And so most households waste a ton of money replacing cheap knives over and over again. And so there's just a couple things you don't want with common knives, a couple disadvantages. The first is the handle. There's wood or plastic. Wood is attractive when it's new, but it's really unsanitary. So it absorbs all sorts of bacteria and liquids and grease. And it's just gross because you touch them and then you touch your food. You actually, they're illegal to use in Colorado in a restaurant setting because of these sanitation concerns. And so... Plastic, though, it melts and chips and cracks and breaks and it's slippery when it's wet. You don't want plastic handled knives. Rivets um, are often made out of brass, which expands and contracts. It creates gaps. And then a lot of knives have a partial tang, and that's where the blade only goes about partway through the handle, which makes them weak and unbalanced. The steel, there's two types there, high carbon and stainless. High carbon is strong, but it rusts and corrodes. But stainless is a softer metal, and it won't rust, but it's difficult to sharpen, and it goes dull a lot easier. You don't want either of those. And then as far as edges are concerned, they're straight and serrated. Serrated rips and tears your food apart, but it can't be resharpened. And straight edges will make a smooth cut, but you have to sharpen them all the time for them to remain effective. And for your Cutco knives, do you have a Cutco sharpener that you use? Uh, no, we just have a honing steel. You have a honing steel. Okay. Yeah, no, so, and does your husband know how to use that correctly? It might have. It might have come with one. I was going to say, it should have come with a, should have come with a. We just have one on our, from our other knife set that we have. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, so, I, I don't think it comes with one. Yeah, we do, we do recommend using that sharpener. Um, yeah. For the reason that it's it's specifically designed for our knives, it takes the point down to a 17 degree angle um, towards uh, the tip. It's the one that you put the knife in it and pull it out. Yeah, so you angle your knife at a 45 degree perpendicular angle to the to the sharpener and just sort of push down and drag through a couple times, like three or four times, and then lightly run it through a couple more times. And it's it's pretty easy to use and it keeps your knives in top condition, okay? Um, yeah, so that one's really, really great. And then if you just need to lightly touch up the blade tip, you can just literally just like let, lightly put it in there and just pull through gently and it'll hone those burrs nice and make sure your knives are always sharp. So again, for the straight edges. Um, and so if you want to go ahead and click to the next slide here, um, we've got the features and benefits page. And this is really what sets Cutco apart. I mean, how comfortable are those handles? Um, they're good. I, I actually like the handles. I just had one of the knives. I'm like, it wasn't balanced right for me, so I kept one of my old knives. Which one was that? Um, the 8-inch the chef's knife, I believe, is, it, it was, is what it was. Oh, was it? So it was a straight-edge chef knife? It was a straight-edge chef's knife. I really did one. Was and it was it too heavy in the blade or too heavy in the handle? It just it wasn't right. <laughs> okay, hey, no worries. It, it's hard to explain. It, it's um, I think is what it was is it was just probably just like an inch too long. Oh, okay. And so I think that was what it was. Brian uses that one. I use my old Eddie Bauer chef's knife. Yeah. So, so is, is I it? Think the whole thing was just too heavy. The whole, so the Cutco knife was too heavy, right? Yeah, the whole the whole knife, and so it just felt like the balance was off. But the balance was totally fine. Oh yeah, no worries. Yeah, That's. We still use it, but. <laughs> it's just not you as much. You don't prefer that one. <laughs> No worries. So that's that's totally okay. It's all a preference thing. We do have a couple other chef knife options as well. You got the petite chef. It sounds like it was like seven, seven and a half inches, probably maybe a little longer. It could be the longer one. It, it's, it's, the it's, one. it's the big one. It's as big as the carving knife. 
Oh, okay. So that's our French chef, actually. You got the biggest chef knife that we have. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> hey, no worries. Yeah, that one, we do sell one that's smaller, a few inches smaller, that actually sounds like it would be better suited for what, like, you like to use. Um, and we and even... I just like it for cutting fruits and veggies and stuff, so... Oh, yeah. No, it's been... It's Chef knives are really great to have, and they're super handy. And then, um, as far as the, like, the, re the features and benefits, though... There are five features that make Cutco the best, and I just want to run you through those. First is the handles. It's a universal wedge lock. fits any sized hand, so it's super comfortable, big or small, left or right. Um, you probably didn't know this. We had to actually study over 700 pairs of hands before we came up with our handle design. And so lots of research went into it, and it makes Cutco more expensive, but it's worth it because it's comfortable and safe. Um, and then, of course, our handles are made out of what's called thermo resin. And thermal resin is pretty similar to what bowling balls and football helmets are made out of. And that's why your knife's handles are so hard. And they're also dishwasher safe, which is, that's why most people like them is because you can throw them in the dishwasher. Do you hand wash your knives or dishwash them? We hand wash them and everybody but Brian is banned from hand washing them. <laughs> why is that? Because we've all cut ourselves on them. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I bought my mom a set too and my sister threw them in the sink and put the soapy water in there. And so my mom went to pull the drain plug and just like fishing around for it. And she, uh, no, no, no. that's probably good. Yes. Yeah, while we're actually washing them. What's that? It's while we're actually washing them. <laughs> yes. It prices our finger. You need to, you need to get a handled brush or something like that. A light, like a light handled brush. Um, yeah, is good. Well, you can have a sponge brush. Yeah, no, I'm, Okay, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> hey, being particular is not a problem. It's, it's your knives, right? <laughs> um, but again, the handle is super durable, and so it's not going to chip or crack or anything. I actually prefer to hand wash my knives as well, um, just because I don't have a dishwasher, though, <laughs> in my apartment. <laughs> um, but yeah. that's just that's just me. <laughs> then the third is the full tank construction. So the blade goes all the way through. It makes them nice and balanced. And this extra steel is expensive, but it's worth it because they're balanced and strong. Um, our nickel silver rivets are flush with the handle, so there's no gaps. And then we use a very high-grade steel that's kind of the best of both worlds. It's got high carbon for edge retention. It's stainless, so it's pretty as well. Um, and so it's an expensive steel, but it is worth it for those reasons. And then the fifth feature is our most famous. It's that exclusive Stay Sharp Double D Edge. And if you click to the next slide, there's that video. But you know how well your knives cut, and so you can skip one more time and just see the diagram there. Do you see how it's got? So it's got three straight edges in the grooves that cut smoothly forwards, backwards, and straight down. Do you see that? Uh, which one are we on? The exclusive double D edge diagram. Yeah, we get it. It's right after the video of them cutting the rope. Oh, that, that's somewhere else. We're ahead of you. Right oh, there. no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. I should check if we're on the same page, literally. <laughs> um, and so the exclusive double D edge has three straight edges. Those points are what protect your inside edges from touching on the cutting board. And just so you're aware, do you guys use a softer plastic cutting board? Uh, yeah. Okay, good. Because it's the cutting board that doles your knife, not the food. And since both of like serrated and straight edges touch the cutting board, it doles it a lot quicker. And so with the double D edge, though, those points protect the inside edges. And so that's why it'll stay sharp for a decade or longer or more, you know? And yeah. so, um, and then most of our knives, as you know, have this edge, but some knives you need straight edges for chopping and whatnot. The next page right here is the forever guarantee. And Sarai, you are a little bit unfamiliar with this. You kind of forgot about this. So um, there's this is really the best part about Cutco, okay? This is why you buy Cutco because this right here is what sets us apart more than anything else, okay? So there's four parts. The first is forever performance. If anything ever goes wrong with your Cutco, just send it back to the factory and they'll fix or replace it for free. So you're never going to have to pay to replace your knives ever again. It's just so you're aware. That's that's pretty impressive. I don't know how you forgot that, Soraya. Come on. <laughs> they're good and I haven't had to replace them. There you go. So don't forget it, though. If you ever break the tip off of them on something or, like, anything yeah, happens. He uses them for a screwdriver. <laughs> and so that could happen. So many knives with my last set. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. It was after they were already bent. <laughs> after you used them for the... That was the second time you used them, though, right? <laughs> Oh, did they? <laughs> what brand were they? Yeah, they uh, the Eddie Bauer. Okay, nine. cool. And so they're they're actually pretty good, but um, yeah. <laughs> so we we do like our Cutco knives though. Good, good, cause they're they're honestly like 
they're impressive. And same with it. The, and they have the guarantees. So um, remember, if anything goes wrong, send it back. They'll fix it, replace it. Um, the second is forever sharpness. Whenever you need sharpening, just send it back to the factory and they'll sharpen it for free as well. All you got to do is pay for the shipping. Um, and so the second thing or the third thing is the unconventional use. So speaking of screwdrivers, if anyone happens to destroy your cut code through unconventional use, this means hitting them with a hammer, using them as a crowbar, pry bar, screwdriver, anything like that, you happen to destroy them through unconventional use, you can still get them replaced for half price. Although like you, I say those things, more often than not, they just replace it for free. And so they... Uh, <laughs> they have no way of knowing how to get damaged. They, most of the time, no, yeah. And honestly, I've seen, they have a hall of fame um, for some of the most disfigured knives in their factory. And like some of them are literally like melted. Someone left it on a stove burner and the thermo resin had melted through. And then they turned the burner off and it solidified around it. And so they sent the entire thing in with the burner as well because they couldn't get it <laughs> off. And so, um, but, and then like other things as well, like they got dropped in a blender or a garbage disposal, all sorts of things. And more often than not, they just like, there was only one in their hall of fame that they made them pay half price to get. And that was a wood block that someone had painted. And it's pretty intentional if you paint a wood block. And so seriously though, like just send it in. They're they're more than likely gonna replace it for free. And if not, they'll tell you beforehand and you can make that decision whether they should send it back or, or not, you know? So you can see, and then the unconditional return policy. So a lot of people like to upgrade and buy more pieces and whatnot, but the best way to know if you really would use those pieces is to try it, right? And so Cuckoo offers you 15 business days to try out whatever else. If you wanted to add anything else to your set, try it out. And if you don't love it, just send it back and you get a full refund, okay? Also, so you're aware, the product is your proof of purchase. And so you don't have to worry about keeping order forms or receipts, um, and which you probably don't have anymore anyways. <laughs> so I'll as long as... Somewhere. You do have it? Maybe. Okay, well... I, th I usually keep receipts for mm -hmm. uh, big purchases. Okay. Well, if you find it, just go ahead and throw it away because you don't need it. <laughs> because it's the as, as long as you have the product, then you can keep it. And this makes so you can pass it down to your kids. And the warranty is always valid for your family, okay? Awesome. And so um, what I usually do here is I run you through like the different sets. If you go ahead and click to the next slide, um, there's a video we can skip just because it's just people that talking about how much they love Cutco and you already love Cutco. So you don't need to hear them. You can watch. You can go back and watch it if you want. And so, Sarai and Brian, it doesn't really. Like, what we're gonna do here today is we're gonna build your Cutco kitchen wish list. And so we have a lot of awesome things and products that most customers don't even know about. Um, so basically, what I'm just gonna show you is everything that Cutco makes, and whatever you know will bring value to you guys in the kitchen. I'm gonna go ahead and put that down on my piece of paper here. And so, just because I write it on the piece of paper, and this is important, just because I write it down, it doesn't mean you're gonna buy it today. So honestly, it's rare that most people get everything on their wish list anyway. And so whatever you don't get today, I'll just keep it on my record. And so that way, if it goes on sale, I can let you know, okay? Sounds good. And so the first part of your Cutco kitchen is a set of knives. And if you see the next page, there's a list full of knives. And does that look pretty f familiar, that set? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are there any pieces in there that you don't own? But you guys have the longer chef knife, correct? No, it's this one. It is that one? Yeah, it is this one. Okay, well, um, I take it you probably wouldn't want the larger one because if you thought that one's too long, then... Yeah, this one, this is the one we have. Okay, perfect. So that's your set right there. Um, if you go ahead and click one more time, I'm just going to run you through the names and uses of these pieces just to remind you what they're used for to make sure you're using them properly, okay? Um, so your paring knife on the next slide is used for the air. Do you ever use your paring knife on the cutting board? Mm, depends on what we're cutting. Okay, so I won't call the Cutco police on you this time, um, but your paring knife is always for the air, okay? You never ever want to use your paring knife on the cutting board. And the reason is, is the cutting board's what doles your knife and the paring knife does not have a lot of blade to lose. And so you want to make sure it stays sharp longer and so always in the air, taking the tops off strawberries, peeling or paring apples, potatoes or anything like that, okay? Um, and the next knife here is your trimmer, and this is what you're going to use on the cutting board. And how do you love your trimmer? Mm, let me see which one is it. It's your small utility knife that you oh, probably that use. You probably use more for anything we else. We don't use that one very often. 
Really? I find that hard to believe. Seriously? You don't use your trimmer? No, we don't. <laughs> Why? <laughs> It's the double D edge, Alistair. Oh, it's... Uh, no. <laughs> no, it's actually, we, we don't use that one very often. Um, I, I think that one we actually put away with the we steak knife. We mainly use the chef knife. Yeah, we mostly use the chef knife, uh, paring knife every once in a while, and... That's about it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, guys, I'm going to run you through these names and uses, and then that way you guys can come up with some uses to use these knives for, because seriously, if you're using these for the right job, it's going to change the way that you guys cook in your kitchen for the better. Seriously, you're, like, you're going to call me up and be like, Nick, I had no idea this knife was so great. And so um, it's important, though, to use the right tool for the right job because of safety and efficiency. So your safety and your knife safety. And so um, that's why you have so many knives in your set is so that you have the right tool for the right job. It's like it's like golf clubs. You're not going to use like a putter for a driver because <laughs> that wouldn't be as effective um, or like a toolbox. So you're not going to use like a hammer for a screwdriver or in, you know, Brian's case, a knife for a screwdriver. Um, but you're going to use a you're going to use the right tool for the right job so that your knife stays sharp a lot longer and that they stay in good condition. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, and so the homemaker set that you have is the best value for the average family, and what it has is the minimum number of tools to do 100% of the jobs in your kitchen as efficiently as possible. So um, the trimmer here is your small utility knife, and so do you guys ever cut up tomatoes or like small pieces of chicken or citrusy fruits like lemons, limes, or oranges? Uh, just the fruits, no chicken. I don't touch chicken. <laughs> Why? Are you, are you vegetarian? No, uh, she doesn't like touching chicken. I don't like touching chicken. Oh, okay. No worries. I won't, I won't touch it and I won't cook it. <laughs> I, I'll make chicken noodle soup, but I don't touch the chicken. Is it, are, is it a salmonella thing or you just don't like to touch it? doesn't like the texture of touching it. Okay. It's and it's gross and we're actually headed towards more whole food plant based. So okay. we eat chicken rarely hey, anymore. Hey, no worries. So you're going to use your trimmer then for all of your like small fruits and vegetables. Does that make sense? And so it's important to have a knife one to two inches longer than the object that you're cutting. And so the trimmer is actually our number one sold piece since the 1970s because it's so versatile and you can use it for small meats and small fruits and everything. And it's just manu super maneuverable. Does that make sense? Yep. And so um, love the trimmer here, but you're never going to want to use it for spreading or serving. And that's why you've got your spatula spreader. And do you see the spatula spreader on the next slide? Yep, we have that one. Do you use it? Nope. <laughs> okay, so... I use my butter knives. <laughs> Why? You have a spatula spreader. <laughs> They're butter knives from a, an Oneida kitchen set, you know, the flatware set. Mm-hmm. And I use those to spread my peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> okay, so did, have you ever spread something with your spatula spreader? No, I have not, actually. <laughs> Will you try it for me? Will you promise me you'll try it? Okay. Okay. So the spatula spreader is super flexible. Um, it's got a wide flexible double D edge. So don't lick it clean because it's just as sharp as your trimmer. Okay. And so this allows you to cut your bagel or roll or whatever it is that you're cutting and spreading the cream cheese or butter or peanut butter on it with the same knife. Um, you can also use it because it's just as sharp as the trimmer. It's like your BLT knife. You can cut the tomato with it as well and spread your mayonnaise with the same tool. Um, That's cross-contamination, dude. I didn't say not to wipe it off first. <laughs> Okay, but if you spread your mayo and then you cut your tomato that you're gonna put on the mayo anyways. <laughs> all right, well, I love my spatula spreader. It's my favorite piece, and, and I get mad at him every time. You get mad at him for what? Sticking the knife in the peanut butter, wiping it on the bread, and then sticking it. Well, in I the do jelly. that. Okay, I do that. <laughs> if I pull the peanut butter off and it doesn't get in the jelly. Uh, the kids do not. <laughs> <laughs> well, have you guys, do you guys eat avocados? Oh, uh, yes, but I have an avocado peeler slicer thingy. You, okay, you're one of those. I get it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't, don't want to cut myself with the stinking knife getting the pit out. So I got something that it gets the pit out and you don't have to worry about sharp edges. 
So what I use is my spatula spreader. Um, is I use the spatula spreader for avocados because it's sharp on one side, and I work my way around the pit, and then I twist it apart, and then take the sharp side to whack and twist the seed out like I would with a chef knife. And then just knock the seed into the trash can. And then I flip it over to the back side where it's dull on one side. It's not it's not sharp. And then I just run it through the peel to make a nice even slices. And with the flexibility of the blade, just scoop all the slices right out of the right out of the skin and spread it out onto my plate or my sandwich or whatever it is I'm using. And so love it for for like um I love it for avocados. Also, you can use your spatula spreader for like pans of lasagna, brownies, rice krispie treats, because you can cut it. What's that? I did see the brownies. We'd actually use it for that. There you go. We found a use for it. <laughs> use your spatula spreader. Come on, guys. Um, and so the spatula spreader is amazing, but you're never going to use it for larger foods. And that's why you've got your petite carver here. And the petite carver, do you ever cut up any cantaloupe, pineapple, eggplant, summer squash, anything like that? Uh, pineapple, cantaloupe, um, watermelon. We use the chef's knife. Watermelon, though. Okay. Um, you have a butcher knife, though, right? Uh, the carver knife, yeah. So, um, no, no, no. Well, you have the homemaker set, so you have all these pieces. So, um, yeah. your carving knife, you're going to use this for smaller melons, like a small cantaloupe, but never like a full size watermelon. Yeah. And I think so. I, use that one. I think I like that one. Yeah, this one's really great for small roasts, um, or pineapple, or your zucchini. If you're cutting your zucchini into slices, this is the best knife for that. And so, the reason is that chef knives are for chopping, so only chopping, dicing, and mincing. You're not supposed to use chef knives for back and forth motions because it will dole it a lot quicker. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so, um, so the sh the petite carver. Use a back and forth motion. I just slice it. <laughs> you just push straight down. I slice through it. <laughs> okay, so it's just a one slice then. <laughs> one slice. That's what you're supposed to use your petite carver for. <laughs> and so use your petite carver um, is the the slicing motions and then chopping motions are for your chef knife. Does that make sense? Uh -huh. Okay, so um, I'm just trying to make you guys be safer in the kitchen and make sure you're using your knives for the right thing. Um, so your petite, <laughs> your petite carver is great. Um, and then your turning fork, have you ever used your turning fork? Why did you guys buy a set of Cutco? <laughs> because way back then when I ate more meat, I used it. So your car, your turning fork is for picking things up. So it's not just for meats. You can use it to turn meats in a pan, but I call it the pickle harpoon because it's amazing to get things out of jars like pickles, olives, pepperoncinis, cherries, jalapenos. So really good for picking things up um, and turning things in a pan. So. The next slide here, you have your heavy duty knife. So this is going to be your butcher knife. It's going to be your watermelon knife. Do you use this one? No, that one's scary. Why is it scary? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are killing me. <laughs> I don't use that one. I don't use that one. <laughs> okay. What do you use to crack up on a watermelon? Your chef knife? Yeah. How is your chef knife any, any less scarier than this one? But you're dealing. Yeah, I, don't, I don't like how it's curved at the top, and so I don't use it. So the reason it's curved at the top is so you can get longer, more even cuts when you're slicing a watermelon into slices, um, or if it's mainly also for like sectioning out chunks of meat, like racks of ribs, um, or disjointing turkey, chicken, or duck, which you don't like to touch. Um, <laughs> but but you can disjoint meats. But this is literally like so. He's the best watermelon knife you have in your set okay so um give him a shot because he's for heavy duty things so if you use your chef knives for watermelons and hard rinds and hard things all the time you're going to dole it a lot quicker so this knife will protect your other knives so they'll stay sharp a lot longer does that make sense yeah but if you came over and watched me cut food you'd say what the heck are you doing lady <laughs> i don't even need to come over and i'm still asking myself what the heck are you doing lady <laughs> i don't like like swinging it down or cut it like what? Uh, we're watching the video. Oh yeah, no, they get a little bit carried away with this butcher knife here in the video. I don't know what he's doing. Like at the end, he's playing Fruit Ninja with that pineapple or something. Cause... Yeah, he, he's playing Fruit Ninja. <laughs> but I use it. I use it mostly for like he did with that watermelon. You know, you just push straight down and then pull it backwards. 
and it yeah. it'll go through watermelon, no problem. But you want your knives to stay good longer. I take it you probably want appreciate your knives to stay sharp longer, correct? Oh, they stay sharp real good. <laughs> yeah, I know. Cutco goes dull so slowly that it's kind of hard to tell how like when your knives actually do need to be sharpened. Um, but they will stay sharp for literally decades if you use the right tool for the right job. So um, that's what you're going to use your butcher knife for. And then the next one is your chef knife that Sarai here hates. Um, this one is the best chef knife in the set, regardless of what she says. <laughs> just kidding. Um, so you're going to... No, and that's totally fine. Like I said, it's a preference thing. Um, and so this is what you're going to use for chopping, dicing, and for... Uh -huh. What's that? That's what I use it for. Okay, so with chef knives, you want to pretend like the tip of your blade is glued to the cutting board at all points. And yep. so you never want to lift it off and just sort of rock and chop. So if you have to lift it off the cutting board for something, you're probably not using it right. So... Um, make sure you're using it for rocking and chopping, dicing. We say it's good for the six S's. Soup, salad, stir-fry, stew, stuffing, and salsa. That's kind of a tongue twister. Don't recommend saying that one five times fast. Um, but chef knives are great, but you're never going to use it for slicing anything, and that's why you've got your slicer here on the next slide. And do you guys bake any bread or buy hot loaves of French bread from the store? Oh, yeah. So do you use your slicer? Oh, yeah. Have you ever shred a head of lettuce or cabbage with it? <laughs> You're killing me. Uh, so use your slicer for those. Try it out sometime, okay? To shred a head of lettuce for taco night or like a boneless ham or a boneless meat of some kind, you can use this for boneless meats, but mostly bread because it has the double edge. It's so versatile and so long that you can get really easy slices of cakes and bread and lettuce and all that jazz. And so, and then do you guys have Thanksgiving turkey or Christmas hams? Both. Because Brian can't eat uh, turkey and I can't eat ham. Wait, wait. So you have you have both per per we holiday. We cook both turkey and ham at Thanksgiving and Christmas. <laughs> That's amazing. Why why can't you guys? Are you allergic? Um, ham does really bad things to my intestines. Okay. There you go. Well, at least you guys have options, though. <laughs> I'm sure the kids love the variety. <laughs> um, so that's what you're going to use your master carving set for. And is that pretty? Has that been pretty good to you guys for carving your Thanksgiving turkeys and hams? Oh yeah. Okay, so that's what you're going to use that for. Um, do you use the carving fork? No. Not even when you're carving a turkey. So, oh, the other set, yeah. Oh, from your old set? Yeah. It, it has these really, like, heavy-duty tines that just stick right in there. <laughs> okay. Well, as long as you're using a fork, I guess. But both forks are important. Um, the carving fork is for holding foods down, and the turning fork is for picking foods up. So this is typically where I ask people, can they see how over a lifetime you'd use every tool in the basic set? <laughs> but, <laughs> but I don't know how much that would apply to you guys. <laughs> I'm going to ask it anyways. Can you see how over a lifetime you're going to use every tool in your basic set? Over a lifetime, sure. Over a lifetime. Okay, so are you guys going to, can you guys make me a promise? <laughs> Will you guys try to at least use your knives for the right things for at least a week? Because... <laughs> You'll try. Okay, please do. And give the spatula spreader a shot. Come on, it's amazing. So um, so if you go ahead and click to the next slide here, um, you'll see the table knives. Those are great. You can skip this set. You know you know how good the table knives are, right? Yep. And then, like and then you got blocks. Do you have any of these gadgets or pieces in the entertainer pack, like a cheese knife, ice cream scoop, peeler, or pizza cutter? I don't have cut codes, but I do have pampered chefs. Okay. You can't you can't dishwash Pampered Chef's ice cream scoop, right? No, you can't. And so ours does the exact same thing. You throw an ice cube in it, and it'll start to melt it immediately, but it is dishwasher safe. 
Um, it's got a zinc filling with a stainless steel plating, and so that's what allows us to do that. Um, zinc reacts negatively with cold temperatures, and so that's why it will melt the ice cream um, or the ice cube. It's got a pointed tip, which makes it easier to scoop, as well as a wider scoop, so you can get the right dang amount of ice cream the first time. Um, and then it's also elevated, so the scoop doesn't actually touch the tabletop when you set it down, so it makes your, your countertops not get sticky when you place the scoop down for a second. And so that's super cool. Um, and then do you guys have a cheese knife? Yeah, we do, but not cut, not, not cut comb. comb. Okay, so our cheese knife, um, again, has the forever guarantee. It's what I call the Sunday knife, because it's holy. <laughs> so, so the cheese knife's amazing. Um, those holes in it have left surface area, so they're great for cutting through cheese or anything sticky and starchy, soft, squishy, sugary. So sorry, that's a tongue twister. I can still get in with this one. Sticky, soft, starchy, sugary, squishy, or delicate. So, um, yeah, so potatoes, apples, you can cut through a marshmallow with that thing and it won't stick to the blade. Um, it's actually, the reason is it's because it's our sharpest knife. So you know the double D edge that I talked about? Yeah. So it has what's called the micro double D edge. So it's twice as sharp. It's got two points for every point that the normal knives have. So it's twice as sharp and nobody really likes to make a scene when they cut the cheese. And so it makes it a breeze. <laughs> and sorry, again, I told you. my. I have boys, okay? <laughs> <laughs> that one's my favorite. Um, and then you got the peeler and pizza cutter. And Soraya, Brian, what's the hardest part of a pizza cutter to clean? Um, underneath the blade and when it attaches to the... The handle? The handle. Yeah, it's a pain in the butt. And so that thing actually slides the disc. Um, the plastic piece slides up and the disc pops out so it's easier to clean. You can throw it in the dishwasher in two pieces. And so that's pretty great. Um, and so on the next slide, you'll click here, you'll see the comparison sheet. You know how much, how expensive Cutco is and how expensive other knives are. I don't need to tell you much about that. High quality cutlery, is it does it's not cheap, but it's worth it. And so um, on the next slide here, you have the homemaker set. Do you see that? Yep. And do you guys have black or white or red? I have black. You have black. And then if you click um, on that square off to the side, do you see where it says homemaker too small? Click here for larger sets. Exactly. Click on that square and it'll zoom it in. And then click yeah. on the box with the extra click video to see four extra signature pieces. Go ahead and watch that. And you can kind of see the cheese knife in action. And then um, the hearty slicer, which is one of my favorite pieces. You can just see how easily it goes through that cheese. <clears throat> but the hearty slicer, honestly, Sarai, you're going to love it for like your acorn squash, your butternut squash. Is there a squash that I could probably list out that you don't grow? Like, do you grow, uh, do you grow yeah, all the I'm, basics? Right now, I'm not growing turban or... <clears throat> there, there's a couple I'm not growing right now. Probably about four or five. Okay, <laughs> four or five of the... How many? <laughs> there are you, eight, eight different species you yeah, said you have? a lot of varieties. Eight <laughs> different varieties, not species. Those are animals, <laughs> um, right? I don't know. Would I call it species? <laughs> You're like, Nick, you can call it whatever the heck you want to, weirdo. <laughs> like, um, so, and you, you have the super shears, right? Yeah. Okay, so, and then what do you think of that smaller chef knife right there? It's a lot smaller for smaller chopping. I like that one, and I don't have that one. Yeah, that one's in our signature set. Um, same with the cheese knife. And what do you think of that hardy slicer? That one's for, like, really hard things. Acorn squash, butternut squash, hard, like, cheeses, large things like pepperoni. Uh, yeah, I was looking at that, too. I was like... That might be fun. I'd have to watch my kids with it because we do cut a lot of potatoes and we'll be doing a lot of squash too. So Yeah, that one's pretty great. And then if you want to slide your, your cursor over to slide number 37, and you should see a list full of all the knives. Do you see that? Hold on. <clears throat> Needs a number. It does have numbers. Don't yell at me. Don't yell at me. <laughs> 37. It's got a list of all the knives. Do you see that? Yep. And so you can see the hardy slicer. You have up to the carving fork. And then you got the hardy slicer, a Santoku style chef knife, a vegetable chopper, which is super cool. Um, and then a cleaver for splitting open like really, really hard things or disjointing. I keep saying chicken because most people eat chicken, but uh, disjointing, like separating pieces of meat. Something with bone in it. That's good for that. 
Yeah, and then the salmon knife. I, I really, do you guys eat fish? Nope. No? Okay, well, we don't even talk about that one. Well, I, I have to talk about him. So he's super flexible, so you can actually bend him in a U shape and then de-rind a quarter wallet watermelon with it. And so that's kind of cool. Um, it's just as flexible as a spatula spreader. Then you got a boning knife, which will cut through raw meats like 10 times better than your trimmer. A smaller bread knife, a cheese knife, and then we have paring knife options as well. We've got a larger one, a 4-inch, um, a 4-inch gourmet, a 3-inch gourmet, a Santoku-style paring knife, as well as a bird's beak paring knife. And those ones, besides the 4-inch, aren't listed on our presentation here, unfortunately. But I could show you what those look like if you were interested. Um, out of those pieces there, um, were there any of them there that you would want to add to your wish list that you could see yourself ever, ever using in your kitchen? <laughs> I'm looking. I know you said you like the smaller Santoku style chef knife, the petite Santoku in the yeah, video. It would probably be the Santoku, the vegetable knife, probably the petite slicer. Um, the Santoku is probably the paring knife. We we have used it, you know, up off of the cutting board. I'll use it doing uh, slicing olives. Oh, cool. <laughs> I'll just slice them in my hand. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, yeah, I, I have trouble watching my kids do that. So. <laughs> Why? Oh, you're afraid they're going to cut themselves? Yes. <laughs> That's fair. They're not always the safest in the world. Well, they are kids, I'd imagine so. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, that pair knife, that's exactly what you're supposed to be using it for, is in the air and whatnot. What do you think of that hardy slicer? Um, I did like it, but then I'm looking at it and I'm seeing that it has the serrated edge on it. It's got the double D edge, yes, and that's what makes it so great, is because... People were cutting through like hard things like those squashes I mentioned with their petite carver um, because they like because the edge is so great for cutting through hard things, the double D edges. But the petite carver is kind of flex semi flexible, and so you don't really want to be cutting through something hard with a blade that has some give to it. Does that make sense? And so yeah. then people were like you using their chef knife for everything, and because they like the stability and the, like the length of it. Um, yeah. But the but the problem is, is it has a straight edge. And with the straight edge, um, it's not for going back and forth and it's not meant for hard things like that. And so you're doling it a lot quicker, um, but they just like the thickness. So they kind of combined the two and made the hardy slicer because it has the thick blade and a chef knife handle with the high knuckle clearance. But with the double D edge, it's gonna get through pretty much anything you ever want it to go through. So, does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> What is what is what are you unsure of? Like, what is your hesitancy with the double D edge? Mm, just the whole sharpness and sharpening it and everything. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that's my biggest hesitancy with it. How sharp it is, or what do you mean sharpening? When we do need to sharpen it. Mm, so you don't want to use it because you don't want it to go dull. Is that what I'm understanding? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Then why did you buy it? <laughs> I don't know. I just, I, I don't, it makes it more difficult to sharpen it when you need to because it has this serrated edge. So you can't sharpen it, and that's why we offer free sharpening. <laughs> so you can just send it back. I don't have my knife for how long ever it takes. So send back a couple at a time, and you don't use them anyways, so what's it matter? <laughs> <laughs> I use my knives. No. Just all of them. Just, that's what I mean. Like, use the ones... I'll <laughs> we both have our preferences of what we use. Hey, that's that's fair, guys. Like I said, I just want to make sure that you guys are using them for what they're supposed to. Um, but the petite carver and the trimmer, like, try the trimmer on some vegetables and, like, like oranges and limes and lemons and stuff, and you'll realize how great it is, especially tomatoes. That thing is amazing for tomatoes. Um, so would you ever want to add the hearty slicer to your wish list? Probably. I was, I was looking between that one and the Santoku one. Yeah. So, so that's the full size Santoku. Um, the petite yeah. one was the one that I talked about. It's about two inches shorter than that one, so it's a lot smaller. You like the smaller one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we have um, a couple different sheath options there. And then you click one more time, and you got the accessories page. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Yep. And then if you want to go ahead and click the arrow. It'll zoom in on the coffee. You can skip that because most people in Utah and most people that I talk to are LDS and they don't touch that. So um, unless you want me to tell you about coffee, no judgments here. I can't stand the smell of coffee, so no, we're good. <laughs> okay, we'll skip it. Um, and then do you guys have good cookware? Um, I actually was 
was very happy to see you guys have cookware. Mm-hmm. And so, and it, what is it made of? I mean, it looks like stainless steel, but... Yeah, so our, our cookware is stainless steel. It's a three-ply aluminum steel. Um, it's very high-end, and so... Um, it's waterless cookware and oilless cooking. So you can still use water in it, but you have to, you can use less of it to preserve the nutrients in your food because the heat is distributed evenly. It cooks from top to bottom and the sides in, so it'll cut your cooking time in half. Um, but since it distributes the heat so efficiently, you actually cook with a lower heat temperature and it cooks at the same amount of time as a high heat thing. Have you, are you familiar with stainless steel cookware? Uh, yeah, I have. Jeff Stanislaw Cookware. Okay, cool. And, um, it's the only one I can make my fudge in because it is heavy duty. Yeah. And it's longer to heat it up and melt it. And so that's why it only turns out in the heavy duty stainless steel stuff. Yeah, so our steel, like I said, it's a, it's a three-ply aluminum. Um, all of our lids are individually like fitted per pan. Um, so it's an airtight seal, which allows it to distribute the, like, so when you put the lid on, it's basically like it's sealed entirely, hence why it'll cook from the top down. Um, and so, yeah, our cookware, it's healthier, um, because again, you use less water, so it doesn't wash away the nutrients and then lower temperatures for shorter time. Um, it holds flavors a lot better and it's dishwasher safe as well. Um, stay cool handles so it's safer and it has a forever guarantee so that's pretty cool can you just cook the whole pan in the oven can you um on the ones that don't have the um the handles yeah so the black handles there those like the pans you can stick the pans in the oven um but most of them have like besides the griddle double griddle and like the frying pans you probably shouldn't put those in the oven no yeah so um but again, they are forever guaranteed, and they're about 60% of the price of com like comparable brands like West Bend, Regal Wear, Salad Master, Royal Prestige, Kitchen Craft. I don't know if you've heard of either of these brands since we uh, cut out the now, middleman. I have a quick question. What's so that? How big is the high dome baking dish? The high dome baking dish. Let me pull up some dimensions for you. Um, So, are you talking about the cover? Mm, oh, that's a, that's a cover. It's not an actual pan. So, it basically... It's a cover for the Dutch oven. Correct. It's the 6.3-quart okay. Dutch oven bottom. But um, you could you could put that down on the stovetop, and it's not going to hurt it. <laughs> so, um, well, they, they've got it sitting there like it's not a lid. Yeah, so that's why it's versatile, so that you can flip it up and use it on the top. So it's not very big then. Um, I'm trying to look up some dimensions for you right here. So, okay. You're good. high dome Dutch oven cover. It's on. Do you look it up? Yeah, it's ten, ten and a half inches in on the inside and four inches in width. Yep. Okay, and how big's the wok and cover? The wok. Yeah. The wok and cover is right here. The wok is three and seven eighths inches deep, and thirteen and a half inches on the width on the inside. And it, again, forever guaranteed, weighs about 6.1 pounds. Um, so out of those, we do have a couple different cookware options um, that come in the sets. So we got the Accomplished Chef there. Um, you can watch the cookware video if you want. So the Accomplished Chef there, and then the next one is the, it'll like zoom in a little bit, and those are the each individual sets. That's the Dedicated Chef. And then you've got the Aspiring Chef. And then the cookware add-ons and whatnot. And so, <clears throat> so aspiring chef has everything. The dedicated just has two frying pans, a one-quart saucepan, a skillet and cover, the Dutch oven bottom with the high dome top, three-quart saucepan, a steamer insert, and a food press. And then the aspiring chef includes 
a frying pan, an 8 inch frying pan, a 6.3 quart Dutch oven bottom, a 2 quart saucepan and cover, and then an 11 and a half inch skillet and cover. So which one do you think would probably bring the best, like be the best value for, or best value to your kitchen for your family? See, this is my thing is I have a really good set of pans, and the only thing I would probably do would be getting the um, the wok would be putting on my wish list. Okay, yeah, I'm going to put that down then. Well, I can cover. Were there any other pots and pans that you looked at that you're like, oh, yeah, I really like that one? See, and I'm, I'm crazy, and I have to actually see and hold the pots and pans and actually look at them to see if I like them or not. Oh, yeah. No, I get that. And that's why... Go ahead. Since we have such a large family, mm -hmm. I need my pots and pans to be of the large capacity. <laughs> yeah, no, I get that. And so um, that's why a lot of people do the, like, 15-day return policy. So it gives you a chance to try it out and cook with it. And if you don't love it after 15 business days, just send it back and they'll refund you completely. So super cool that way. Um, were there any of them that you were like, yeah, that one's kind of like, I could probably see myself using that, but I'd have to check it out first? Yeah, cool. Um, I'm really happy with my other pans because even I don't cook with oil. Okay. Um, and they're, my pans are pretty good. That's awesome. That's so. super cool. Yeah, no, they uh, stainless steel, it really does like make your cooking a lot healthier because you don't have to use those oils and it cooks so much evenly, more evenly. Um, and then next on the next slide here, once you're finished, if you're done looking at cookware, um, we have flatware chests as well as other extra table knives. Has eight table knives been enough for you guys? I mean, you've got 12 uh, kids. <laughs> we, we don't let the babies use them, so uh -huh. it's enough. Yeah, and like I said, we don't eat meat very much anymore, so. Yeah, and so um, the, the table knives are actually really good for vegetables as well. Um, zucchini yeah. or, or like asparagus. How hard is asparagus to cut? That stuff's intense. <laughs> so. Uh, it, it depends on what kind of asparagus you get, and if you get the proper stuff, or if it's overripe, you know, if it's, you know, if it's past its prime, then, you know, and if it's grown too long, then it's not good. Okay. And if it's the right stuff, it's nice and tender. Yeah, see, I don't, I, I just grab whatever's in the store, so. Um, I, okay, so you have to realize this about me. I'm very picky about my food, and I'm very picky about how it's cooked and prepared. Which is awesome. And if I'm going to eat, it has to look good and taste good. <laughs> so what you're telling, is that a dinner invite I hear, or, uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I love to feed people, so. <laughs> well, day, hey. If you want to come over, you are more than welcome to come over. I mean, it's kind of a, it's kind of an hour, two hours away. But like I said, if I'm in town, I might have to trade you a knife sharpening for a meal. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. <laughs> so, could you see yourself ever using the flatware right there? No, not right now. Okay, and then. I yeah. And then last, on the next page, we got your gadgets, your cheese knife, ice cream scoop, pizza cutter, peeler, can opener, and wine opener. Um, could you show, so, see yourself ever using any of those items with the forever guarantee? Um, most likely the peeler. I would probably try that. My kids really like cheese, so... Do, would you prefer uh, one with a traditional handle or the comfort grip handle? Uh, traditional? I don't like the comfort grip. Okay. So. The traditional one, then? Yeah, and, and is it the traditional one that you find in Walmart? <laughs> no, like the traditional handle, like like all of our other handles. That's what I meant by traditional. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, because there, there was the one that, you, if you remember, it, it's just this little metal one. Oh. And the handle is just this thing that, it's, uh, oh man, I wish I could... Can you get me a cookware price list so from Jesse? So you can see the little, the, um, you can see the, the piece that hooks the peeler onto the handle. Mm. So it's, it's all metal. There's no plastic. And I can't even, I can't even explain it right. So, <laughs> that is the handle that I like, and nobody makes those handles anymore. The, the one that you're describing? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm trying to visualize what you're saying, Soraya, and I can't. <laughs> Yeah, the empty open metal handle. 
Okay. I can, I kind of get so I kind of get what you're saying. Um, but yeah, no, it's just the traditional like the normal like trimmer handle and stuff that we Okay, yeah, I would have to go with the traditional. <laughs> yeah. And then what about the ice cream scoop? Could you see yourself using one that's dishwasher safe? We don't eat ice cream very much anymore. Wow, that's unfortunate. I tell your kids I'm sorry. <laughs> Really, really bad when she has dairy, so mm. we don't eat ice cream anymore. Hey, that's that's totally fine. I'd rather have a uh, like calm people in the household than someone being irritated because they have ice cream. I know I'm lactose intolerant and uh, I still eat it, but I probably shouldn't. Oh, me too. I'm lactose intolerant <laughs> and I loved it, and I would eat it as much as I could. And <clears throat> I would have to say that <laughs> yes, for you. <laughs> and so, what about the what about the pizza cutter? What do you think of that? Um, same thing. We don't really eat. Uh, okay, so the pizza we eat is Little Caesars anymore. <laughs> there you go. Hey, that's good stuff, though. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. We do, we do like to make homemade pizza, but mostly we just use our knives to cut the pizza and the slices now. <laughs> Well, tell me, tell me at least you're not using your chef knife for that. <laughs> I won't tell you that. Okay. <laughs> Please, guys, come on. We're trying to keep your knives good. Um, and so, don't tell me it. And then you said you like the peeler. And what about the can opener? Do you guys have a good can opener? Um, I just have a can opener. Okay, so again, ours has a forever guarantee, so if it ever breaks... I don't know how many can openers you've had to buy or are going to have to buy in your lifetime, but this one's amazing because it's always protected and it's got a magnet on the front so you don't have to dish your fingers in the can, fish out the lid. You can just stick it in there and pull it out. Would you want to add that to your wish list? And it, you don't use it all weird, right? It's not like the Pamper Chef one where oh, you put no. it on the top and you open it on the top. It's no, small. it's it's just the traditional can opener, yep. <laughs> okay, because, yeah. I The one thing that drives me insane about the can openers that you get at the store mm -hmm. is that they rust. Yeah. Um, so. So um, ours has the stainless steel, same steel as our knives, so it's not gonna, it's not gonna rest on you. And I can even stick it in the dishwasher, and it's not gonna rest. Yep. Okay, cool. Do you wanna add that to your list? List, yeah. Can opener, how many? Huh? <laughs> I said how many? <laughs> Just the one. We have one person open cans. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I don't know. You guys got a lot of mouths. So, um, <laughs> Uh, you know, it can be upwards to two to ten. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. And then on the the next slide here, we've got after the accessories, we've got the hunting and sporting knives. Do you guys hunt or fish at all? No, we don't hunt. You? We don't fish. Okay. He's a total city guy. Okay. Do you have anybody that you need to buy like gifts for that hunt or fish that you think would be interested in these kind of things? Uh, no. Okay. And then the last page right here is the garden tools, which I think you'll love. Um, because, so a couple things about the garden tools. Number one, forever guaranteed. So they're always, you know, no matter what happens, if you hit a rock and chip them or whatever, I don't, and I don't care what you do to these things, you're always gonna have the same guarantee as our knives. Um, the handles are blue and yellow instead of the normal like green and brown hands like shovel handles that most people use i don't know who decided to like use those colors for garden tools because then they just blend in with your dirt and plants and so these are going to stand out a little bit um your bypass pruners are super nice because what i love is you can send them back in the off season when you're not using them so they're always maintained and sharp and ready to go when you need them the most um and they're just they're probably the best bypass pruners you're ever going to use. And so if you buy it as a five-piece set, it comes with a free bag, um, which is super cool. Do you like the garden tools at all? I do. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to add that to your list? I don't know that they don't stay where they're supposed to, though. Hey, that's <laughs> fine. You just tell, them, tell everyone those are yours and not to touch them. Okay, so I say they're mine and everybody touches them. <laughs> and so they're blue and yellow, so you're not going to lose them in the dirt. <laughs> Yeah, so we use a very, very high quality steel. Um, it's the same one as our knives, the very high grade steel. 
um, for our garden tools. And then the way that the shovels are like ewed into the handles, it provides a lot more structural support. So that way it's not going to, you know, break and, and pop off super easily. So um, it's, yeah, very treat heat treated, high carbon stainless steel. And then the handle is made out of glass reinforced polypropylene. And so covered by a thermoplastic like elastomer. So, um, so it's super comfortable and it's just, yeah, it's super, super durable. So. Uh, you can put it on the wish list. I, you know, I, it, it would be way far in the future, but yeah. Yeah. Um, and something I'd use like right now. And then like the, the full, like the full five piece set or just individual pieces? Uh, the five piece. Okay. And then on the last next page here we just have your you can see the pairing knife options and then do you guys have enough cutting boards um and like barbecue sets and whatnot um yeah i have i have lots of cutting boards every time i go to the store my husband's like no more cutting boards you have enough <laughs> are they soft or plastic it is yeah. okay good i just want to make sure um and so on your wish list here, I have your Petit Santoku Veggie Chopper, Petit Slicer, Hardy Slicer, Walk and Cover, um, Peeler, Traditional Cheese Knife, Garden Tools, and a Can Opener. Was there anything else that you wanted to add on your wish list? No, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. No, I just want to know, is there anything else that you saw today that you're like, oh yeah. Okay, so um, this, is, this is the fun part. So um, just for fun, what I like to do is I like to just add it all up and show you what it would look like if you wanted to go ahead and get that today um, so that you can kind of see what you'd be looking at, okay? Um, as far as the Petit Santoku, um, I'm, do you have a pen and paper? No, pencil. Okay, that, that works too. That's equally as writable. <laughs> Grab a piece of paper, which I do. There we go. So the Petit Santoku is 124. The Veggie Chopper is 150. Okay. The Petit Slicer, the smaller bread knife, is 109. And then the Hardy Slicer is 144. Okay. And then you have your walk and cover. I'm trying to, I just had a Cutco cookware price list a second ago. Here we go. So the walk and cover is 591. And then the peeler is 42. The traditional cheese knife is 89, and then the can opener is 59, and then the garden tools are 235. And so that's what everything costs. And then like, if you just, I'm wondering, like, if you wanted to like eventually down the road and you got all these knives in your wish list, what would you keep them in? Like, where would you keep them? <laughs> is that where you keep your block? That's where I keep my block, yeah. Why so high? <laughs> I have children ages 20 to 1. <laughs> so are they not allowed, do you not put them in the drawer ever? I don't put them in the drawer, no. Okay. I don't even put my silverware in the drawer because they take it outside and dig with it and I can never find my spoons or forks. <laughs> so if you had like... If you had these knives, where would you would you put them in another block, or would you prefer like sheets on them to keep them protected? Uh, most likely sheets, sheets. Um, but they would get lost in whatever they got put in. Yeah, yeah. And then we have those safe storage trays as well for putting in a drawer. Do you like those a little bit better? Yeah, storage trays. That's, I've got a bamboo one that I use for my silverware. Okay. Yeah. And well, well, so total. And everything. What's so, that? Yeah. What's that last part? It's the thing that I have that it's sectioned so that, you know, things don't go sliding around all over the place. And that's got to be nice. <clears throat> yeah. So if you guys wanted to go ahead 
Um, if you wanted to get everything on your wish list, this is what that would look like, okay? Normally that would be 1551 total for everything. So $1,551 for everything. Um, and I do have a thing that I'd be able to do. So 1551, since you guys were nice enough to see me today, what I can do is I can use my representative discount as like a buy now kind of thing that my manager gives me permission to do. Um, and what I do is instead of paying 1551, I would give you the petite Santoku that you liked for free. Mm -hmm. So that'd take off 124, as well as the hearty slicer. So there's another 144. And then I could give you the peeler. I'm just trying to see how much more stuff I can squeeze in there. Um, <laughs> And I think, let's see, I said the Petit Sentoku, the Hardy Slicer, the Peeler, and then I could still squeeze in that Petit Slicer as well. It's kind of pushing it, but I'm just going to total that up and make sure it works because I don't want to put my foot in my mouth, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I've done that before and that was not fun. Um, So that would take off $419 off your total. So instead of paying $1551, that'd be only $1132 today. And most people, what they do is they take advantage of a five-month interest-free investment option. And so that brings it down to only $245 on the five pay, what most people take advantage of. So for only $245 today, you get $1,500 worth of free or worth of stuff. Um, and about four hundred dollars off. How does that sound? It's doable. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's doable. Um, my my biggest thing is is uh, my husband's gonna be out of work here soon. Yeah. And so um, that that's like the biggest issue we've got going on. So yeah. We're kind of trying to save as much as we can. Yeah. Uh, but. I'm a big old slacker, and I'm not a slacker. I'm spoiled. That's what I am. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's not in here. <laughs> oh, okay. I was gonna say like. <laughs> no, no, I I am spoiled, and when it comes to kitchen, he knows that if I'm going to cook, I like my kitchen to be top shelf. Yeah. And so that's and he knows I. I like to have my kitchen supplies quality, and so that is one way, one place we actually splurge on is my kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I he yeah he's not in here, so I can't even say you know I can talk to him or even <laughs> look at him. <laughs> yeah, where where did he go? Uh, he's he's holding the baby. She started. She got upset, so okay. uh, he's taking care of her right now. Yeah. Um, when's he, when do you think you could ask him? When's he going to be back? Uh, I can get him up here. <laughs> Hold on a second. Yeah, he's not here. <laughs> you know, Sarai, one thing I've, like, noticed is, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. I feel like people with more kids are always a lot more, like, chill. Does that make sense? Like, I don't know. I just, like, I've met with a lot of people who've had a lot of kids, and, like, most of them, they have to deal with so much chaos on a daily basis that it just, like, nothing phases them anymore. Is that true? <laughs> Okay, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, uh, it, I deal with it differently, and when you have kids with, you know, special needs, and every single...
single one of them is different. Mm -hmm. And so you have to learn how to deal with it differently for each one. And what works with one kid doesn't work with the other kid. Yeah. So you, you have to be flexible. And I, you know, I don't think I'm chill. I, I really, you know, <laughs> people meet me and they say, you're the most patient person I've ever met. I would never be able to deal with that. Uh -huh. And, um, I, if you see me at home, I am not patient at all. <laughs> I don't think I'm patient, but yeah. So, okay, so this is how much it is all together. These teaching would give us for free. So it would knock that off. It would be that. And then for five months, interest free, it would be that. And that's after taxes. That's after taxes. Hey, no worries. He's thinking, what the heck are you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have cucumber. Are those any good? Oh, these are good. Go get some fresh cucumber and fresh carrots, okay? Go get some fresh ones. Oh, okay. Hey, that's fine. If you need to mute me and do some communicating with words, feel free to do that too. <laughs> I was actually just going to think of doing that. <laughs> Hold on one minute. Uh -huh. Okay, so now we're going to Yeah, I'm still here. <laughs> so, so he said you're gonna do it anyway, so <laughs> Okay, so you wanna go ahead and get that then? What's that? Yeah. Okay, cool. And then um for your uh storage, so that's um we have a couple of options here. So your vegetable knife. Um it doesn't fit in a tray and it doesn't have a sheath. Um so I'm just like trying to figure out where you're going to keep it. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so um, we do have a couple of options with that. We do have a block that we sell called the gourmet set block. And it's really great because it has a spot for your vegetable knife. Um, it has a spot that you could put in your extra chef knife. Um, it has a spot for the hearty, the santo Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is those spots are interchangeable. So you can put your hearty slicer you're getting in there, your vegetable chopper, you can put your five inch santoku in the santoku spot. And then I don't know if the uh, bread knife, the petite slicer you're getting will fit in the boning knife, 
But you can just take a knife out of your other block and throw it in the boning knife spot and then see if it'll like mix and match and try to find a spot. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then um, what, you'd, what you'd put in your cleaver spot, um, I'm sure you'd put your cheese knife there or something. But yeah. did you want to go ahead and get that as well? It would be um, for the gourmet set block, it would add about 30, 30 bucks to your order today. So, yeah, that's fine. okay. And then, are you going to be paying for this with a credit card or a debit card? Uh, it's interchangeable. <clears throat> so, okay. And then, uh, I'm in a. What? I, we don't use a credit card anymore. So. Okay. Yeah, no worries. And then, um, you have plenty of cutting boards, right? Yeah. Well, if you were to say, I'm just throwing this out there, if like you were to happen, if there happened to be an extra cutting board that ended up for free in your box, like what size would you probably hope it would be? Uh, the larger, the largest one you have. The largest <laughs> one. Okay. Well, if that, if that ends up in there, then I don't know what happened at the factory, but it's, uh, <laughs> if that ends up in there, I will be more than happy with it. Cutting boards. <laughs> okay. Save you the, save you the trip. <laughs> Save your your husband the headache for you coming home with another one. So, <laughs> yeah. Match the other one that we have. So yeah. And it's and it's fifteen by twelve, so it's plenty uh plenty big. Um and I yeah. That'll cut a good size watermelon on it. Yeah. And so um could you give me or do you have your card ready? No, I have to go get it unless my husband has his, okay. which he doesn't. Hold on. <clears throat> Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll just pay for it all right now. Okay. So, um, it was 11.32, it's 12.84 with the gourmet set, with the block. Okay. Um, but that's totally fine if you want to pay that in full. Um, let's see. And then is the email address that, you, that I sent the confirmation to the... Is that one you'd rather the, the email, get, the receipt get sent to? Yes. Perfect. And then the number that I'm calling you on, um, seven, eight is a good number to, if they have questions with shipping. Yep. And then what is your street address? It's four. Okay. Can you spell that for me? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then drive. And what's the zip code on that? Eight. And then it's. The billing address name, is it going to be yours or your husband's? Uh, mine. So it's S-A-R-I-A-H? Yep. And then what's the card number here? It's... And then the expiration date on that? And then is the shipping address the same as the billing address? Yep. Perfect. Awesome. And so, um, let me pull that up here. So make sure everything's squared away on that. Um, <clears throat> I'm just making sure I have everything. You got your walk and cover, your petite santoku, your vegetable knife, your petite slicer, your hearty slicer, your vegetable peeler, your traditional cheese knife, your can opener, five piece garden tool set, um, your block, and your cutting board that fell into the box on the way out of the factory. <laughs> um, and so, um, were there any like Kitchen tools like spatula, spoons, or anything like that that you wanted to add as well today? Well, you got me on the phone. No, uh, this will this will this will be good. Okay, cool. Just want to be sure. Um, and then, did you have any gifts that you were in the need of buying for Christmas or Mother's Day, Father's Day, anything like that? I'm not that nice. <laughs> okay, cool. Just wanted to check. So, um, you see, you could have fooled me with this phone call. So, um, <clears throat> I, I usually make things for people. <laughs> okay, hey, those are always nice though, <clears throat> especially if it's edible. <laughs> we, we usually cook for people, so. And again. Yeah, I'm serious about it. you know, if you wanted to come to dinner, you are more than welcome. To and I'm somebody. serious about that. Like, if I'm over in that side of town visiting my aunt or something like that, then I'm going to have to because that's pretty. Uh, that's an offer that's pretty generous, and I don't want to don't want to turn that down. <laughs> and so. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'm just I'm just finishing up this order right here just to clarify everything, confirm everything, make sure that it doesn't get shipped to your neighbor. 
um, which I think you'd appreciate. <laughs> so, um, I mean, like you said, you're not that nice. So, <laughs> let's see. Um, and then, just to be sure on the email address, it's. And then you should get an email right here in a second. The, and you wanted, were you fine with regular shipping, by the way? Yeah. You want to pay for that in full. And then your tax on that is 105.27. So 1381.27 is your out the door price after sales tax um, in the full price. Perfect. And so while I'm finishing this up, <clears throat> sir, I, there's one last very important part. And first, I got to ask, how did you like my demo? <laughs> a lot more talking than our first demo, so she was a quiet person, and so, uh, and we were her first demo. Oh, really? So, so yeah, no, um, but yeah, and she's she's now our cousin-in-law, so. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you said she left on a mission, right? What's that? You said she left on a mission, right? Yeah, she she went on her mission, and then she came back. Is she a lot more talkative now? What's that? Is she a lot more talkative now? Uh, she, she's just a very quiet person. It's not awkward to talk to her. She's just very quiet. And okay. so she, she's a lot like Brian. Mm. And since she's up in Rexburg, we don't see her very often. So. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, I, I mean, I just know missions cause people to open up a little bit. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then they come home and they Back yes, <laughs> they go right back to where they started. Ho hopefully not, yeah. but <laughs> that's supposed to be a time for growth, not regression. <laughs> yeah. um, well, great. So there's one last very important part. Um, like I said, I get paid every time I show Cutco, not necessarily yeah. when people buy. So while I'm finishing this up, I have a pen and a paper right here. Um, and what I what need of you is just five to six hundred of your closest friends and family. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm totally kidding. Most people that I talk to know at least 15 to 20. Um, and so who's the first person that comes to mind that you think of that might be nice enough to see a presentation? Or who loves to cook? Uh, well, I, my, my friend Andrea, her husband is a chef. Oh, cool. <laughs> so, um, and I did warn her that I was going to give her your name. Okay. You knew her name. I can talk, really, I can. Uh, <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, Andrea, though, I don't know if Marion, Marilyn, sorry, I have a friend named Marion, too. Um, I don't know if she gave you her name or not. Is her husband's name Todd? No. No. Okay. Um, so, how do you spell her last name? And she lives in Las Vegas? Yeah, she's... In Vegas. Is she like the same side of town as you guys? Uh huh. Yeah, same neighborhood. And then what? Um, do you have her number right handy, or do we want to come back to that in a second? Yeah, I just looked it up for you. <laughs> is it 702? It is 702. Okay, well, uh, okay. And then you said she's living in Las Vegas. She's just your friend, though. Oh yeah, she's my friend. She like your best friend. I talk to her a lot, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and then you said her husband's a cook? Yeah, he, he's, a, he's a chef. He, um, right now he's in between jobs, though, so they probably won't buy anything. Okay. Um, and, uh, yeah. Okay, cool. But, yeah, so can you turn close the door, please? <laughs> still on the phone, can you please? <laughs> Um, there's the door. There it is. <laughs> so who else can you... <clears throat> and close the door on your way, please. You too, Josh. Thank you. It's got to be nice to have older kids that can kind of help with the younger kids, though, right? It, it really is. And before I had kids old enough to help with the younger to help with the younger kids, it was very stressful, and I thought I was crazy and didn't know, you know, <laughs> what I was doing. Then it, then it was more like cheaper by the dozen, right? <laughs> you were questioning my sanity at that point. <laughs> I bet. Well, thanks. So, What's Andrea's husband's name, by the way? What's that? 
What's Andrea's husband's name? Uh, Clay. C-L-A-Y. Clay. And then, um, who else can you think of? <clears throat> uh, well, I, well, I was just talking to you, Mary, my friend Marion. I don't know, you know, she's really nice, but, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. What you, but, yeah, what? <laughs> Okay, <laughs> you just said that with hesitancy. Well, I don't know how, how much people are going to, you know, if they're going to want to listen or not. So, oh, yeah, no worries. And so... I'll give her my name and I'll let her make the choice. Absolutely. And Sarai, I do have, uh, like, sometimes people can be a little bit weary about, like, giving out their friends' names and numbers and whatnot. And to kind of help with that, I have a system because I don't want to actually cold call any of these people. So I'm super glad that you did give And Andrea a heads up. Um, because I have a text that I'll send you when we're off the phone. It basically goes along the lines of, hey, I just want to let you know that Nick, my Cutco guy, will be giving you a call. He's paying his way through college by showing Cutco. You don't have to buy anything. Just listen. He gets credit. Thought you'd be nice enough to help. And this gives yeah. them a heads up. And that way, if any of them respond, I don't call them for at least a day or two, sometimes more. Um, but it gives them plenty of time to respond. So if any of them say no, we're not interested, you text me, and then I just cross them off my list, okay? Okay. And so how do you spell her name? Marion is M-A-R-I-A-N. Mm -hmm. And what's your husband's name? Uh, Mike. And what's their last name? And do you have her number handy, or should we go back to it? I do. <laughs> it's uh, 702. Okay. And then she's just a friend as well? Yeah. In Las Vegas? Yep. Um, who else can you think of? Who, who else loves to cook? <laughs> None of my friends love to cook. I think I'm the odd man out. Like <laughs> who do you know that would appreciate getting out of the kitchen quicker than ever with good knives? <laughs> <laughs> um, I can I can give you Kim uh, Kim's number. Okay. Can you spell yeah. the last name? And what's her husband's name? You said. Robert. Robert. And then what's her number? It's uh, nine. And how do you know Kim? Uh, she's a friend from church. Okay. So you... I only know people from church because that's the only place <laughs> I know. So do you want to just like print out your word directory and email it to me? I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, people are calling my work, so. What's that? Not all of the, uh, well. Okay, only out of all three of these people, there's only one in my ward. And that is uh, Andrea? No, that's Kim. Oh, Kim. Andrea, Andrea's not in my ward anymore. Oh, yeah, because you moved, right? We didn't move. They split the ward. Oh, okay, that makes sense. I remember and you saying that. Nathan is the bishop now. Yes, that's right. I, okay, I remember talking about this. Um <laughs> And then they had to, yeah, I hate when they do that, by the way. That always, I mean, it's it's nice because you get closer to the people that you're now in the wards with, but at the same time, it can be a little frustrating. But well, all my friends are in the other ward now. So what you're telling me is you just need to move. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, yeah. We, we, yeah. <laughs> who else can you think of? Um, I, I think in that... You know, my father-in-law would probably say no. Okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, but, uh, <laughs> I mean, he could at least say it no to me, right? <laughs> yeah, I can have him do that. He's the one that cooks in the house, and so, um, add that. Hi, baby. Um, so, yeah, let me, I gotta get his number first for you. So, his name is Earl. Okay. Um, and his wife will not sit and listen with you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because she'll be the one saying no. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> so, and he does the um, cooking anyways, so. I, well, they both cook, but he likes kitchen gadgets and stuff. So okay. But yeah, so his number, I gotta find just his plain old text just from him. <laughs> Group texter. So, Throwing it off? My father-in-law, yeah, no, he just, uh, we just have group, you know, he's been doing group texting a lot, so, uh -huh. uh, so it's 7.02. Yeah, other sign for circumstances. Who else can you think of? Uh, 
Who do you know that really likes nice things? <laughs> um, I everybody likes nice things. Whether <laughs> they buy them is another thing. <laughs> hey, like I said, I get paid just to show it. So, <laughs> who do you know that would appreciate the nice things if they had um, them? Yeah, I'm going to give you one more person's name. Okay. And she's a sweetheart, but you know, I yeah, it, it's our bishop's wife. Okay, what's his, uh, what's his, her name? Her name is Ashley. L E E or E Y? E E. Ashley, what's her last name? I don't know how to spell that, but I'm gonna guess. <laughs> Pretty okay. Exactly how I was gonna guess it. Look at that. Better than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> a bishop's wife, right? Yeah. <laughs> and um, I it, it's Bishop. So um, I believe his first name is Jake. Okay. <laughs> it's Bishop. <laughs> Wait, what? It's <laughs> Bishop, didn't you know? Oh, I, I did, <laughs> actually. It's a requirement now. They make name change once they get the calling. <laughs> calling, they have a name change. It's no longer brother, it's Bishop. Right. Uh, but there, her number is... Perfect. Thank you so much, Sarai. Like I said, this is really what helps me out the most. Because if I don't have people to see, then, then I don't have a job. And so um, I really do appreciate it. It really means a lot. Um, and then all of these people live in Las Vegas? Yeah, they all live in Vegas. Um, <laughs> just so you know, sir, I, I do have a sponsorship program. So um, thank you for these names, by the way. Um, but if you're able to get me to at least 10 names, you become a sponsor of mine. And regardless of these people see me or not, it still helps me out because once I get 50 sponsors, my manager actually buys me a free piece of Cutco. And so it's pretty cool. <laughs> Is there any way you can think of at least five more people? They don't have to be in Vegas. They could be anywhere in the country. I, well, I can think of five more people, but <laughs> I don't know if they'll like me after I think of five more people. <laughs> and you totally give them the heads up. So that way, like, they can have the opportunity to say no before. Yeah. So super low key that way. I can give you my sister-in-law's name. Okay, what's her name? Christy. Is it a K or a C? H. K R I S T I. Okay. Um. So your sister-in-law? Yeah, my sister-in-law. She in Vegas? No, she's not. Where's she at? She's in Colorado. Colorado. And then what's her number? Uh, nine. And then, who else can you think of? Okay, um, Jill. J-I-L-L? Yeah. Perfect. And then she's just a friend, or? She's a friend. In Vegas? Yeah. Okay. And then she has a number starting with 702? Yeah. And does she love to cook at all, or why, why do you think of her? No, she does not like to cook at all. She hates to cook? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Like to cook. All right, who else? Uh, uh, Melanie. I don't know how to, I don't even know how to guess that one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then Melanie? And she's a friend or a relative or? Um, she's a friend. In Vegas? Yeah. And then 702. Okay. Um, who else can you think of? Who is the most, like, well-connected person you know? I don't know anybody like that. <laughs> <laughs> who do you, who's the nicest person you know? Who's the nicest person I know? Uh-huh. <laughs> you can't come up with that off the top of your head. You need to hang out with nicer people. <laughs> They're all nice. <laughs> okay. It's just a matter of picking which one, not a matter of finding one, right? Yes. <clears throat> exactly. Okay, and then her number is? Nine. Friend? Yep. And Vegas? Mm -hmm. And how do you know Sandra? Uh, she's a friend of mine. Okay. <laughs> she moved. To, she moved here from uh, Kentucky about uh, 
about four years ago, and we, you know, we have a lot in common. She has nine kids, and so that that was what brought our friendship together. Was you know that we had that in common. And, you know, <laughs> Playdates play dates were easy because you could just not have to pull multiple families. You just got yours together and everyone had a partner, right? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. They, they, uh, yeah, our kids pretty much line up. That's awesome. Uh, so mine are the t- older two. The, our older two, they don't have any their age, but they get along with the kids that are just younger than them. So. Oh, yeah. Um, and then one, one more, you can get me to 10 and become a sponsor, Sarah. I, so that helps out a ton. Um, let's see here. Who do you know that owns a yacht? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> who, who do you know that likes, that has their med- credit card number memorized? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I wouldn't know that. <laughs> right? You'd be surprised how many, I asked that question sort of jokingly, and then a lot of ladies are like, I do. <laughs> I don't. Uh, yeah, me neither. I don't shop online that much, so... I, I don't even know the first four digits of mine, and my husband knows the first four digits of his. I know the so, last four, if that counts. I don't even know the last four, because if I have it memorized, that means I'm spending way too much money. <laughs> you're, the first half. you're not getting it, though. It's great, though, because I don't know the end, so I'm okay. <laughs> so you can't spend it if you don't know the end. Okay, so this person is really, really nice. Okay. <laughs> I saved the best for last. <laughs> Please. Duda. Duda. Yeah. Is and it D A? D D U D A. Yeah. Is there a is there another Duda and a day at the end of that? <laughs> Duda Duda Day. <laughs> I okay. I sing that in my head every single time. Duda Duda. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one that just did that. Um, and she's a friend as well? Oh, uh, she's my bestest friend in the whole wide world. Well, she's one of them. I have a lot of best friends. So. Hey, that's good. Where does she live? She's really, really nice. Um, and, and she's really funny, and she'll totally laugh with you really good. So. Okay, okay. So her number is seven. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome thank you so much sir I like I said uh, this is really what helps me out the most and, and I do appreciate it um, because again if I don't have people to see I don't have a job and so I will send you that text um, once we get off the phone and could you text me back at the end of the night once you had a chance to send that out to everybody uh-huh, yeah. Okay, awesome, Sarah. I, well, I, again, I, I have had so much fun, and I really hope to meet you one day over dinner and sharpening. Um, and so I, I do want to thank you, though, because the cut code that you got today um, just helped me meet my, week, my weekly goal, um, which is keeping me on track towards some prizes that I'm trying to win right now towards and towards my scholarship as well. So I want to thank you for that. Um, and I know you guys are going to love your Cutco. Please try to use the right tool for the right job. So send me something that says what everything is for, and I'll be great. So do you want me to just forward the email I sent you with the presentation we've been using this whole time? Uh, it's, got, it's got wonderful videos. I, I actually have that, so I can just click on the link and look at it. So. Okay, okay. And then I'll, I'll see what I can do about putting something else together. Because, again... Use using them, it's gonna it's gonna make it a lot better. Um, it's gonna keep your chef knife from crying every time you're like, not me again. <laughs> Give me a break. Chef knife loves me. Yeah. Well, we'll see how long he loves you for when he's the only one you use and he goes bad so much faster. So. I, I don't have any problem with him. He's pretty good. My chef knife loves me. You'll have to text me a picture of him so I can see it. <laughs> All right, so right. Hey, well, I've I've enjoyed our time together. Do you have any other questions for me? No, that's it. All right. Thanks again. I really appreciate it. And I'll talk to you later, okay? Talk to you later. Thanks, Nick. Thanks. Bye. Bye. <clears throat>